What's up everyone and welcome to my tutorial series on creating a forum in PHP uh, episode 5. In the last episode we did some lists and we created our table and we just made our website even cooler. Now, in this episode we're going to be talking about creating uh, HTML forms where you can actually enter data and uh, we're going to learn how to build them which is going to be super cool. So there's one thing we have to tidy up first though that I forgot to mention to to, to T tutorials ago so as you see we've got our images in this folder with our HTML documents now that's okay to do like there's nothing super wrong with that but as we start we're gonna start adding more HTML files and more PHP files and it's just going to get even more cluttered just with so much junk and that's going to be terrible so what we can do is we can create a new folder so to do that I think it's a uh, control alt shift control alt shift in maybe no control shift in yeah control shift in we're just gonna call it images to also you can just right click and go new folder new and then folder um, but this is just easier so now inside of this images folder you just want to select these two images and drag them in so you'll have them in there now you want to inside of here we want to um, as you can see, we need to go back into the website because if we ref refresh, uh, the images are gone. If you refresh and the images aren't gone, hold Control and push F5, and it'll do it because the website will cache the images. So even if they're gone, it'll show up. So you need to do that. Now to make the images go back, we need to say, we need to tell it exactly where it is, and it's not profile. The website doesn't see profile that pick uh, GIF because. Right here, there is no profile uh, pic.gif. We have to tell it that it's in the images folder in here. And to do that, we need to say images slash profile pic.gif. And now we use a forward slash, not a backslash. Because in Windows, we, you know, we use backslashes to indicate our directories. But here in HTML, we have to use a forward slash so it knows exactly where it is because that's just what HTML uses and that's what Linux uses in the modern world. Windows is weird. But um yeah. And now we need to do it for this cool.jpg too. So say uh images slash cool.jpg. Save it. And now go over to here and just refresh the page and our images are back. So nothing new just cleaning up a little bit, that's something you have to do when you make uh, your website, we didn't have to, but it's strongly recommended. Uh, so yeah, let's um, get right into the news in uh, this episode, where we're going to basically create HTML forms. And now, you guys have seen an HTML form before, I'm sure. If you go to, I don't know, like, they're everywhere, you know, they just let us submit data, heck, uh, I don't know, there's this weird website called Google, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but on Google, you've got this box where you can type in stuff, so, submitting data to an HTML form, oh, form, not form, so, you know, this is an HTML form, this is part of an HTML form, it's just basically where you can submit data. Uh, another one you may have heard of, uh, I don't know, this is some website, some website called Twitter, this this weird guy called McJugger Nuggets who literally has like no same subscribers. There's an HTML form right here. So there's Mango's tweets. Um, in this one tweet, I don't know if Twitter uses PHP, but uh, I'm submitting data to a database through an HTML forum. A MySQL query and possibly PHP for YouTube lol so th that I just submitted data to a database with an HTML form so this is an HTML form uh, these buttons are you know it's all that's just how it works so that's that's really cool actually um, I and mean, we're gonna create some of those so we can submit some data. The data isn't gonna go anywhere in this episode, but it's cool. So we're just going to create one. To do that, you I bet you guys know exactly what the tag is. Um, it is form. Uh -oh. 
So I'm just gonna type it first, and then I'll show you the um the uh the others the attributes. Just so like form, and then you wanna do slash form magic. And now inside of here, this is our form tag. This is where we can put some data. So if we save it, nothing really is gonna show up. We don't have any data in there. <coughs> So we need to put some data in there. And the way we make, you know, this text boxes and stuff is with something called inputs. And an input is just something you can input data to. An input could be like a button, you know, it could be a it could be a text box, it could be a radio button, it could be a checkbox, a select field, all that stuff. So we want to say input. And now we want to say uh, we want to give it a type because the input you can't just do an input, you have to tell it a type. So we say type equals, um, and the type is gonna be text, because we want a text box, and the, um, and now we just close it. Um, inputs are weird, it's a weird tag. You don't need a slash to close it off. You can literally just put this, and then you can just put that. You don't need a closing input tag, and you don't need a slash for the end of it. So it's super weird, but that's just how inputs work. Now we want to, uh, we also want to put some words here so we know what this is called. We're going to say a uh, name, I guess. And now we need to surround this in a paragraph. Because remember, it's bad practice to just have uh, raw text on our website, even though we have it like here and everywhere else, but whatever. <coughs> Literally dying. Now we need to surround this with a paragraph. So a quick shortcut in Sublime is Control Shift G. And this is called Emmet Wrapping. And if you don't have that, you can just surround it with paragraphs. But we just want to put the word P there. And uh, I don't have this surrounded. Boom. Uh oh. I don't know how this happened. Hold on, guys. Control Shift G. What is going on with that? Yeah. Uh, enter Wrap attribute p boom okay so now it is surrounded in pa paragraphs which is cool uh so we can i'm just gonna put these on the same line because it's easier boom so now if we go back to our website and we refresh the page we will see we have this name thing where we can enter some data so if i type in a uh, name nicholas kage boom as you can see, it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere, but we just enter data to our website. There's actually a place that it goes to, like some HTML website that shows all the data you submit, but I can't remember what it's called. So, uh, I don't know. So that's basically how you create an input. Now let's say we want to have, uh, let's make another one of these, I guess. So, you know, to do, uh, to do that in Sublime, Control shift d to uh, automatically generate another another line. This isn't, okay, there we go, that's much better. And now, right here, P. So we're gonna change this to uh, age, and we'll do one more and say occupation. And once again, this data isn't going anywhere, I just wanna show you how it works. So now, name and age, now we need to do uh, occupation, and now we need a button because we need the data we need to we need to have a way to send the data somewhere so we need another input so we need a p and inside p we will of course want input <coughs> and it automatically generates everything for us the inputs type will be submit and now that the type is called submit because that's just um that's just what php's default value for it is i guess uh, or I mean, that's just what, uh, the, the button, that's, sorry, that's what the button's name is to create a button. I don't know why they call it submit, I would just call it button, but whatever. The guys who make HTML and PHP are weird. So as you can see, it's nice, we've got our three little fields here. Um, we can put all these words in here. And if we click the button, nothing happens! The data is submitted to nowhere. So next I'm going to show you a couple more attributes to creating forms. Uh, we are not going to talk about get and post yet, because that is a little bit, uh, over, that'll go a little bit above your head until we start getting into PHP, but that's okay. Um, we need, let's say we have a, a, a value here, um, you know, we want to, like, let's say we want to default, ha we want to have something in there by default, so you want to create <coughs> value is, um, 
that's what you want to put in there. And inside uh, this value, we want to say, or inside there, we want to say the value is, um, what should our default name be? Uh, we'll just do Nicholas Coca Cola. Just why not? And uh, age will be. So we'll do value equals uh, 93. There we go. And then uh, occupation value equals garbage man. Save it. And boom. There we go. So if we submit this data, it doesn't go anywhere. The page refreshes. And uh, we've got this these three little bits of data here, which is super cool. So that's that's basically how you create a form in HTML. Um, in the next episode, we'll probably oh yeah, one more thing. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm not actually sure if you do these inside or outside the forum, but I don't I don't in the forum, but I don't care. We're gonna do it inside. I'm gonna teach you about the text area tag. And to do that, it's just text area, and then it, oh area tab. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll just show you the tag, and then we'll worry about the attributes, because this automatically generates all the attributes, but it's too complicated if you don't know what it is automatically. Like, if you don't know what it is before you start this, you'll just get confused. So it's just text area, and then slash text area, all in one word, not TA or anything, because it's stupid. So you got your text area. Uh, now we need some attributes, of course. Uh, well, actually, we don't. I'm just going to show you what it looks like first. So, uh oh, nope. Eventually, one day I will buy Sublime Text, but today is not the day. Not today, Zerg. So we've got our text area, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put something in front of it. We'll say bio, uh, no, life story and heroes journey. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm going to put it in a paragraph. I don't know if that's the best thing to do, but we're going to do it anyway. Control shift G, obviously to sublime wrap. Paragraph good. Perfect. It's already doing everything for us. Uh, so we'll just say, oh gosh. Uh oh. So now I'll just um, put that there. And we'll move this over here. Let me zoom out some more. I could probably afford to do that. Yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah. So let's see what this looks like. <coughs> If you guys are still watching this and you got this to work, I want you to comment, uh, I want you to comment something, just the word something, because I want to know who's still watching. So we've got all this working, which is, uh, super fantabulistic, xbl -docious. Now we have to tell it, we have to tell this text area to actually submit data into our form, because we don't want it to just be sitting there being completely useless because the form has no idea that it exists. It knows these inputs exist because they're part of the form, but the text area is a separate thing from a form. I don't know why it is, but it, it is. So you want to say form, and you want to say ID, which is uh, an attribute that every HTML element has, but uh, we're not really using it until we get into CSS, which we're probably not even going to cover in this tutorial. So you say form ID equals, we'll just call it, um, uh, information. That's our form's ID. And now inside of our text area, we need an attribute called um, form equals. So we need to tell it what form to look for. And the form is, of course, information. Information. There we go. Which should go ahead and generate it. Or it should, it should tell the form that whatever's in this text area is also going to be submitted when the button is pushed. So we can go over here. And I don't think anything on the page is going to change, but when you type stuff in and you push enter, that also should disappear. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. So this, you can also, you don't need a value for your text area. Um, you can literally just type stuff in here. So this is text in the text area. So that is magical. So if we refresh, did I save? I don't know if I saved. Let's save anyway. 
boom, this is text in the text area. And that, I guess, is gonna conclude it. Uh, I could show you, I could show you a couple more attributes for text area. One of them is, you guys probably remember in the table how we did columns and rooms, or rows. Uh, when text area, we have columns. So we can say the columns, this is just like the amount of, amount of um, vertical space, or I guess horizontal space. We'll do 50, gosh. Ugh. And then uh, we'll do rows is uh, 30. I don't know how this is going to look. This is probably not a good size uh, uh, text area. Let me zoom out even more. There we go. Let's uh, save that and let's see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, that's not a good... That's not, I would not recommend uh, doing a text area with this size. Um, but whatever. So if we click on this little triangle, this is, I think, an exclusive to Chrome thing. We can actually resize it, which is cool. We can't... We can't move it past uh, that, which is unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, I just usually stick to the default one. But, um, that is cool. I think there's one more attribute you can do. Let me see. Text area. <coughs> Alright, name. We'll get into that later on. But, um, this is going to, I guess, conclude it for our tutorial series on creating, or on this episode, excuse me, of creating our um, of inputs, which is super cool. In the next episode, I'm going to teach you about PHP, which is the language of our server. So, hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial series. If you are not, slap a dislike on it. Tell me that you hate me and that uh, everything is stupid. Uh, but if you are, slap a like on it. Subscribe, if you haven't already, to keep track of uh, even more cool stuff and to be updated on when the next tutorials are posted. Um, if... If uh, you have any suggestions, or I'm going too fast or way too slow in the comments, let me know, and I will adjust, comment, whatever you like. Anyway, till next time, you guys, I'll see you all later.